fire is antidote for cold so what i mean you know this from our own experience we know that fire will dispel cold so warmth will dispel cold is something that is known to us and then vedas also agnir himasya bheshajam this is a vakya from vedas <coughs> so what does this vakya do anuvadakatva it merely reiterates that which is already known to us it is already known to us that fire dispels cold and thus when veda also says that then it merely restates or reiterates something that is already known to us by our actual experience so manantra yogya arthe this knowledge of the fire being the antidote for ice or, or cold is manantra yogya is something that is available for knowledge by perception by direct experience then vakyasya ved vakyasya samvade a ved vakya also is an agreement with what is known through other means of knowledge anuvadakatva then veda will be called anuvadaka meaning it merely reiterates what is known like agnir himasya bheshram iti vakyavat <coughs> says bheshram iti vakyavat and the next vatnavakan uh, visamvade suppose veda says something which is contradicted by other experience says so fire is cold suppose it says then what then you have to understand it in some ways because it just contradicts your practical experience here it says says aditya yupah this yupah means sacrificial post where an animal is tied is called yupah aditya yupah this sacrificial post is sun you know now what's the relevance of this so Uh, the sacrificial post is sun now this this statement of the veda aditya yupah necessarily contradicts our practical experience because we know that the sacrificial post is not sun thus the bheda or the distinction between the two is already known to us and still the veda says that aditya yupah that means it contradicts our experience visamvade sati abodhakatva then we say that that particular statement aditya yupah does not reveal its meaning so agnir himasya bheshajam that fire is opposed to cold it reveals the meaning all right but reiterates what is known and aditya yupah the sacrificial post is sun in fact does not reveal any meaning because it contradicts what is known through practical experience either way what suppose something is whatever is known through other means of knowledge which reference to that what can vedas do either vedas can reiterate what is known through perception or they can contradict what is known through perception that's all if they reiterate then also they don't serve any new purpose if they contradict then also they defeat the purpose either way if vedas deal with something which is already existent in that case they do not serve any purpose at all and therefore if they don't serve the meaningful purpose it will not be called pramanam so pramanam must necessarily have phalavad or phalavad or saparatvam must be there and it must bring about some phala must be meaningful and if that meaningfulness is not there veda cannot be called pramanam so if vedas deal with any objects which are already in existence and which can be known through other means of knowledge then vedas do not have pramanam here there is an assumption that that which is already existent is can all def- they can necessarily be known through other means of knowledge because otherwise you don't know that it exists for you to say that something is you must necessarily know it either by perception or inference and therefore anything that exists must be known or knowable through other means of knowledge and therefore vedas cannot have any activity with reference to such objects <coughs> this is what he explained by purnanandiya here vedavakyas vedavakyasya manantra siddha vastu bodhakatvam gikare anuvadakatvat apramanyam syat if you say that vedavakya is merely telling us something which is known through the means of knowledge then anuvadakatvam syat then the vedavakya is only reiterates what is known and there was a pramanyam there is not pramanam it doesn't enable us to know what is unknown it reveals what is already known so agnyatasya gnyapanam is not there atah siddha bodhakatvam na sambhavati therefore vedas cannot deal with siddha bodhakatvam meaning cannot reveal something that is already known then agnihiti there is drishtanta so sadrishtantam hetu hetu is मानांतर योग्य वाक्य मानांतर योग्य वाक्यत्वे अनु अप्रामाण्यम दिस इज अ हेतु 
हाउ अग्निर्हिम से भेषजम अग्नि ही हिमनाशकत्व प्रत्यक्ष प्रमाण सिद्धम पुनः शब्द समुदाय रूप वाक्यम भी तदर्थ बोधकम चेद अनुवादकम बहुत ही तद्वत इत्यर्थ है अग्नि ही हिमनाशकत्व प्रत्यक्ष प्रमाण सिद्धम एवरी नोज दैट अग्नि एलिमिनेट्स ही कोल्ड एंड देन वाक्य में शब्द समुदाय एंड देन दिस वाक्य अग्निर्हिम से भेषजम विच इज एन अग्रीगेट if that also say, is only serve the purpose of teaching that alone if it serves some other purpose then it's different if this statement that the fire dispels cold has a purpose other than just the literal meaning then it will be meaningful but if you say that it just literally means what it says then it is not meaningful therefore the siddhant you have to prove the mimyansa you have to prove that such vakya the purpose to serve more than merely the literal thing, meaning they have some other purpose to serve <coughs> whatever it is you know so that they have to prove is a visambhadeti visambhadeva abodhakatvat visambhadeva means suppose they contradict of course here purananda gives another meaning also visambhadeva means bodhakatva abhave suppose there is a statement which does not give us does not tell us you know about some existing thing ved vakyasya anuvadakatva bhya siddh vastu bodhakatva anangikare if you say that ved vakya made a reveal siddh vastu then it becomes anuvadaka then in order to release vedas from this fault of being just anuvadaka meaning merely reiterating what is already known by fear, on account of fear of that you say no no vedas do not reveal that which is already existent or that which is already known then siddha vastu bodhakatva anangikare then you say that vedas do not reveal siddha vastu karya bodhakatva sya bhi anangikaran since according to you vedantas do not deal with karya and then you are re- retrieving you are retreating from the position that no no vedantas don't reveal siddha vastu also then what is left siddha vastu it doesn't reveal because it is anuvadaka and karya it does not reveal because according to you vedanta is brahma brahma para <coughs> so agbodhakatvat brahma pratipadakatam sutram na sambhavati therefore vedantas do not deal with anything or do not serve any purpose at all in that case brahma pratipadakatam sutram na sambhavati definitely vedantas cannot be brahma pratipadakam because brahma is already an existing thing athwa i mean this is says whatever all you have said there nothing new is saying i'm just reading the sentences so just so that you have satisfaction that everything is known otherwise we feel that some sentences are left out which they may be left out anyway but athwa <laughs> we some i mean we have not taken any guarantee here athwa we some vade pramanantarena virode prapte sadi we some vade means when it contradicts that's another meaning so two meanings of we some vade word are given by purananda अबोधकत्वे सदी और विषम प्रमाणांतर विरोधत्वे सदी सपोज व्हाट वेदा सेस कॉन्ट्रडिक्ट्स व्हाट इज नोन थ्रू एक्सपीरियंस और अदर मींस आदित्यो यूपह न इति भेदग्राहि प्रत्यक्षेण विरोधात वी नो वेरी वेल दैट दिस सैक्रिफिशियल पोस्ट इज नॉट सन भेदग्राहि प्रत्यक्ष सो परसेप्ट बाय परसेप्शन यू नो दैट यू नो द डिस्टिंक्शन बिटवीन द सैक्रिफिशियल पोस्ट एंड सन यूप ही वाक्य से अबोधकत्व यथा सो आदित्य यूप है दैट वाक्य डजन रियली रिवील एनीथिंग बिकॉज इट कॉन्ट्रडिक्स व्हाट इज नोन थ्रू एक्सपीरियंस तथा नाहम ब्रह्म यदि भेदग्राही प्रत्यक्षेण विरोधात अहम ब्रह्म यदि वाक्य से अबोधकत्व देन यू से अहम ब्रह्म आई एम ब्रह्म आई एम लिमिटलेस नाउ दैट कॉन्ट्रडिक्स ऑल ओवर एक्सपीरियंस सो अहम ब्रह्म वाक्य फॉल्स इन द कैटेगरी ऑफ आदित्य यूप everybody knows that aditya yupa is not aditya similarly aham brahma i am brahma i am limitless no that is just ridiculous because it just contradicts all our experience everyone knows who i am i know that i am a karta bhukta sukhi dukhi i know i am a i am a human being definitely i am not brahman i am not god i am quite clear about it anybody is maybe god somebody who can cure all my disease anybody can be god i am definitely not god that i am very clear and therefore this aham brahma vakya definitely contradicts our practical experience and therefore it falls in the category of such statement is aditya yupah and therefore abodhakatvam just as that statement does not 
teach us or does not reveal, reveal the meaning. And so also this is, does not reveal any meaning. Therefore this Vakya also is not Praman. Bhashyas Bhashya Parishkara Anumanam Anumanam Sporaiti So Bhashyakara when you made this statement Nahi Parinishthita Vastu Pradivadanam Sambhodi Pratyakshadi Vishayatvat Parinishthita Vastu Naha There is Anumanam inference involved there. What is that inference? Nahi Ratna Prabhakara clarifies on the page 127 Siddho Na Vedartha Manantar Yogyatvat Ghatavat Iti Siddho Na Vedartha Iti Ghatavat Iti Ghatavat Iti Ghatavat Iti he is the, it must really get, we get some trophy, something it must get, this ghata must get some kind of a prize. All Vedantis must place ghata in, in some wonderful altar, you know, because what this ghata has served the maximum purpose. Everybody likes it, not only Vedantis, but the Purum Mimamsakas and all these fellows, Nayayakas, everybody likes ghata. They talk of bhava and ghata bhava, bhava then also ghata bhava, then anything. Whether they call it uh, Pragavava, Pradham, Savava, every ghata always comes, you know. So, Siddha, Na Vedartha. Na Vedartha means Veda Pradipada, Veda Pradipadita Artha. So, Vedas cannot necessarily deal with Siddha Artha or something that is already existent or already known. Siddha means already known also. Manandra Yogyatva. Because that which is already known is only fit for or is only subject or is available to for other means of knowledge ghatavad like a part so what's the purpose suppose vedas describe in great detail a part so what what well, doesn't serve any purpose like write an essay on a cow you know with four legs and two horns and things like that suppose you find a description of a cow in the vedas so what will you do that, that does not serve any purpose because it does not teach us anything new and therefore that will not be called veda or you will have to interpret it in some way you know, either you say it is, what is it, shepi, what is it, kshepakam. It's something added later on or it has to serve some other purpose. There is one nice thing, whenever we don't find any relevance of kshepakam, you know, and you discard it. These people are very serious. So if the Puro Mimamsaka also wanted to discard things because it apparently did not make sense, then half the Vedas would have been discarded. But not a word is discarded, not a syllable is discarded. That's why you can see how sincere and devoted they must be and how brilliant they must be also that they have found relevance of every such statement. Agnir himaste bheshajam, aditya yubha, saha arodhi, he wept, you know, and any such statements, all of them have been found to be meaningful or relevant, you see. And it was the express purpose of the Puru Vimamsa to show the relevance of the whole Vedas, then alone it is Pramanam. Ghatavat iti uktva nishphalatva cha tatha. So first Vashyakara said that anything that is already known cannot be the subject matter of Vedas, like a part. And secondly also, because the Yogyata is not there. So when Manandra Yogyatvam is there, then Veda Yogyatvam is not there. When something is, is fit for knowing, being known by other means of knowledge, definitely does not, is, does not fall in the category of that which is knowable by Vedas. And therefore, therefore we say, it just doesn't make sense. So how they are discarding Brahman as a subject matter of Vedanta is, it doesn't make sense. Brahman is already existent. Brahman is already an established thing. It is there. It just doesn't make sense that Vedas will deal with it. Because what purpose will it serve? Since it would not serve any purpose, therefore we say that Vedanta cannot possibly deal with Brahman. Then we have to show how it serves the purpose. Then they will accept it. Or whether they accept it or not, at least whatever criterion, what is their criterion? Pramanam is what? Phalavad arthaparatvam must be there in Pramanam. So wherever Pramanam is there, according to them, there is Kriya Paratvam. Wherever Kriya Paratvam is there, Phalavad arthaparatvam. So Vedas will be called Pramanam or valid means of knowledge because they directly or indirectly deal with Kriya. And wherever Kriya or action is involved, Dharma is involved, there must be necessarily some useful purpose served. So ultimately it amounts that Vedas are Pramana because they serve a useful purpose in our life. So Vedanta will show that useful purpose can be served even by revealing something that is already there. That useful purpose can be served not, not only by revealing karma or dharma, that useful purpose can be served in life by also knowing something which is there if you don't know it. 
And if the ignorance creates all kinds of suffering in the life, then knowledge will eliminate that suffering. In that way, in that way even knowledge of that which is which is existent, like Brahman, also serves the purpose. This will be the burden of the, the Siddhanta. <coughs> then Nishphalatvacha, not only it doesn't make sense, Nishphalam, Purupakshi says, that revealing something which is already there is Nishphalam, it's just meaningless. Tadidi, that's what Bhasha says in the page 127. Tatha Siddhuna Vedati Ad Ok. Says Vashya. Tat Pradipada Necha Heo Pade Rahite Purushartha Abhava Says Tat Pradipada Necha Parinishida Vastu Pradipada Necha. If you say that, the Vedas or Vedanta reveals. Brahman, which is already an existent thing, if Vedanta can re- is, is devoted to revealing something which is already there, then Heopadeyarahide. Brahman is not available. Heyatvam or Upadeyatvam is not there in Brahman. That which is already there, you can neither acquire nor you can reject it. Purushartha Abhavat, Khalavat Artha Paratva Abhavat. It does not serve any useful purpose. So if, if if Vedanta reveals something which is already there, like how many teeth the crow has, or how many uh, lungs do you have, and what's the nature of pancreas, etc. In which case, since it does not create any new any activity, so that this is a mango tree. That's wonderful. So what do you do? Nothing. So knowledge of an existing thing does not create a new any activity. Neither there is an activity of acquiring, nor there is an activity of rejecting. So there are two kinds of activities, pravritti, as you will explain, pravritti and nivritti. And so if, then in pravritti and nivritti alone, useful purpose can be served. No useful can, purpose can be served by just standing there, you know. So this is tree, so I stand there. It doesn't serve any purpose. Say there is a mango there. And then if it creates in me an activity to, that to get that mango, I climb up the tree or I do something, then that statement has created an activity and served for me a useful purpose. It can be another way also, somebody, you know, somebody can, I can be beaten also for doing that. Then there may, there will be nisheda. But some, either preventing me from being beaten, which is don't uh, touch that mango or don't do anything with this mango tree, that nisheda vakya also serves a purpose of saving me from a beating. Or, so that also is a purpose being served. Since there is a natural tendency in a person that whenever the fellow sees mango, that he will want to have it. And therefore he will necessarily have performed an activity to acquire that mango. And that the owner is watching such fellows necessarily. And therefore whenever you climb up, then he stands there at the, you know, at the foot of the tree and waits for you to come down. <laughs> so then this kind of anartha can happen. So whenever anartha can happen, then there is a nishetha vakya. Don't do a given thing because if doing that will lead to anartha and so all nishedha vakyas save you from anartha from possible from possible difficulty or suffering that is a nivritti so there is a nivritti of natural tendency and there is a nishkriyada then there is a pravritti <laughs> then this fellow doesn't want to do anything pravritti you engage him in doing something by giving him that, by revealing to him that some useful purpose will be served so he is hungry all day but doesn't want to do something. Well, if you cook, then your, your, your hunger will be appeased. So he's not interested in cooking, but he's interested in appeasing the hunger. Therefore he will take the trouble of cooking and eating or whatever is necessary. And that is how the vidhi and nisheda, vidhi creates pravritti, nisheda creates nivritti. Both serve the useful purpose, one by acquiring something which we desire or one by avoiding something which we do not desire. Both ways they serve the useful purpose. When? When there is something which requires kriya. If there is a mango in your own hand, then here is a mango does not do anything because does not create any pravritti or nivritti. Mango which is there on the tree, when you reveal that mango, then it will create a kriya in you. In that case, that so there is not parinishthita vastu. You say, oh mango is there, but it's not with you. 
and therefore it is not that acquired mango in which case knowledge of that mango there's a tree as the children do hey come i'll show you something look there on the tree how many mangoes are hanging there then this fellow is motivated say ah, hi nice i want to eat it it is not established winning it is it's something which needs to be acquired but in sthita which is not available for acquiring not available for clearing not available for modification not available for anything is parinishtita vastu that mango is available for acquiring then it can become the object of revealing of course by somebody anyway so nishfala so see tat pratipadane cha heyopade rahite purushartha abhavat se siddh gnyapane heyopade gochare phala abhavat cha tanna sambhavati ityartha सिद्ध ज्ञापन है वेन वेदास टीचर समिंग विच इज ऑलरेडी देर हे ओपादे अगोचरे फल अभावाच अगोचरे आई एम सॉरी हे ओपादे अगोचरे सिंस सिद्ध वस्तु इज नीदर हे हे मीन्स दैट विच कैन बी डिस्कार्डेड ओपादे दैट विच कैन बी एक्वायर्ड फल अभावाद एंड एवर देर इज नो एक्टिविटी एक्टिविटी ओनली कैन बी आदर फॉर हेयत्व और उपादेयत्व आदर फॉर डिस्कार्डिंग समथिंग और फॉर एक्वायरिंग समथिंग सो फल अभावाद since there is no activity therefore there is no phala tanna sambhavati and therefore vedanta cannot deal with parinishtita vastu <coughs> now that is what ratnabhavakar himself explains this phalam hi sukha avapti hi dukha hanischa phalam result can be so we said phalavat arthaparatvam purusharthatvam is what so phalavat arthaparatvam there is what serves the purpose is that which is meaningful सो फलम ही सुख अवाप्त ही दुख कहा निश्चय टू काइंड ऑफ रिजल्ट आर शॉर्ट बाय ह्यूमन बींग और बाय एनी लिविंग बींग सुख अवाप्त ही दुख कहा नहीं सो एक्वायरिंग हैप्पीनेस एंड अवॉइडिंग अनहैप्पीनेस इज व्हाट अ ह्यूमन बींग सीक्स तच्च प्रवृत्ति निवृत्ति भ्याम साध्यम एंड दिस सुख अवाप्ति इज और अटेनमेंट ऑफ हैप्पीनेस इज थ्रू प्रवृत्ति एंड अवॉइडिंग दी अनहैप्पीनेस इज थ्रू निवृत्ति तच्च प्रवृत्ति निवृत्ति भ्याम साध्यम ते च उपादय से प्रवृत्ति प्रयत्न कार्य से हेय से निवृत्ति प्रयत्न कार्य से ज्ञानाभ्याम जायते न दैट प्रवृत्ति विल बी बोर्न ऑफ व्हाट प्रवृत्ति विल बी पॉसिबल व्हेन यू कम टू नो समथिंग व्हिच कैन बी एक्वायर्ड उपादय से प्रवृत्ति कार्य प्रयत्न कार्य से उपादय मींस दैट व्हिच कैन बी एक्वायर्ड so if a thing has is nature that it can be acquired or you can take up to it or you can do the anushthanam then the knowledge of such a thing will create in you a pravritti knowledge of brahman does not create in you any pravritti because you are brahman doesn't create any pravritti at all then upadayatvam is not there nor brahman which is you already are can be source of anartha therefore also there is no nivritti there so in that case so upadayasya pravritti prayatna karyasya हे अस्य निवृत्ति प्रयत्न कार्य से और इफ समथिंग रिवील्स दैट व्हिच शुड बी गिवन अप देन बाय नॉलेज ऑफ समथिंग दैट दैट इज अवेलेबल फॉर डिस्कार्डिंग और दैट कैन बी डिस्कार्डेड नॉलेज ऑफ दैट विल आल्सो क्रिएट इन मी अ प्रवृत्ति ऑफ अवॉइडिंग इट एंड नॉलेज ऑफ समथिंग व्हिच कैन बी डन विल क्रिएट इन मी अ प्रवृत्ति व्हिच कैन बी वेयर इन देयर विल बी सम डिजायर टू एक्वायर समथिंग न जान सिद्ध ज्ञान अभ्याम सो प्रयत्न कार्य से ज्ञान निवृत्ति प्रयत्न कार्य से ज्ञान अभियान जाए थे न सिद्ध ज्ञान विभाव दिस वॉट अगेन इज एक्सप्लेन बाय पूर्णानंद उपादेय याग मत प्रवृत्ति रूप प्रयत्न साध्य है फॉर एग्जाम्पल वेदास गिव अस ए नॉलेज ऑफ याग ए पर्टिकुलर याग यू नो ज्योतिषोम और वॉट एवर सो पर्टिकुलर याग इज वॉट इज द वी गेन द नॉलेज ऑफ द याग फ्रॉम वेदास then when i see that when i learn about the yaga then also there is a statement there swarga kamo jyotishtomena yajeta one who is desirous of swarga may perform jyotishtoma so when i then gain the knowledge of jyotishtoma yaga then i know that it is a means for swarga and therefore it is dharma it is phalavat arthaparatvam and therefore there is in me a pravritti of performing the yaga because i am interested in swarga so upadeya yaga मत प्रवृत्ति रूप प्रयत्न साध्य है दैट प्रवृत्ति रूप प्रयत्न टू काइंड ऑफ प्रयत्न दादर प्रवृत्ति रूप प्रयत्न एंड निवृत्ति रूप प्रयत्न द दिस याग इज साध्य है इज समथिंग टू बी एस्टैब्लिश और समथिंग टू बी अकाम्प्लिश बाय एन एफर्ट ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ प्रवृत्ति और एंगेजमेंट यदि कार्यत्व ज्ञान 
उपादे आगे अनुष्ठान उपा प्रवृत्ति ही जाए दे यदि कार्यत्व ज्ञाना सो देर इज अ नॉलेज ऑफ कार्यत्व दैट देर इज सम एक्टिविटी इन्वॉल्व हियर एंड देर वर उपादे आगे अनुष्ठान रूपा प्रवृत्ति ही जाए दे बाय इन विथ रेफरेंस टू यागे व्हिच कैन बी परफॉर्म सो देर इज अ प्रवृत्ति ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ अनुष्ठान ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द यागे बिकॉज़ आई कम टू नो दैट दिस यागे इज इष्ट साधनम तया सुख प्राप्त रूप फल उत्पद्य दे देयर इज पुरुषार्थत्वम फलवद अर्थपरत्वम तया सुख प्राप्त रूप फल उत्पद्य दे एंड बाय परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द यागे Follow up the nature of acquiring happiness arises. No siddha jnana, and that does not happen by knowing some negatory or knowing some existing thing. Such a result is not there, and therefore, no siddha jnana adanusthana dwara phalam tasma siddha bodha katve nishphalatvam eva, and therefore, there will be nishphalatvatvam, there will be meaningful meaninglessness or uselessness. Even Vedanta deals only with siddha vastu. तथा हे अपि इति उभयमाह सेम थिंग अबाउट हे मीनिंग सो कलंज भक्षणम और समथिंग लाइक दैट सो ईटिंग दैट रेड मीट और व्हाटेवर इट इज और और कलंज इज सपोजेडली द मीट ऑफ एन एनिमल दैट इज बीन किल्ड बाय पॉइजन एरो यू नो दैट इज दैट इज कलंज एंड दैट यू शुड नॉट ईट बिकॉज़ दैट क्रिएट सम काइंड ऑफ अदृष्ट इन टर्म्स ऑफ पाप सो व्हेन आई देन when i read something or when they know let me understand this then immediate nivrutti arises in me he abhi because kalanja is what he vishaya and therefore i will dis- i will avoid it or i will discard eating that meat <coughs> says phalam hi sukha vapti hi dukha hani se pravrutti nivrutti bhyam adi says purana again pravrutti shabdena anusthana adi kam uchchade nivrutti shabdena tushnim bhavah pravrutti meaning performance of yaga nivrutti meaning desisting from something tushnim bhava means desisting from something not just remaining quiet but desisting from re- some retreating from something adharma nivrutta nivrutto ham idi anubhavena nivrutti paripalya praga bhava yogitva nivrutti prayatna karyatma idyaha nivrutti prayatna karyasya so kalanj bhakshana nivrutto ham kalanj bhakshana adharma this is what shruti says सुरापानम इज अधर्म कलंज भक्षण अधर्म सो वेन आई देन वेन आई वाई डिजिस्ट फ्रॉम ईटिंग मीट और डिजिस्ट फ्रॉम ड्रिंकिंग अल्कोहल देन वॉट डू आई अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज दी वॉट इज दी नॉलेज ऑफ फीलिंग दैट इज जनरेटेड इन मी अधर्मा निवृत्तो हम आई हैव डिजिस्टेड फ्रॉम अधर्म आई डिजिस्ट फ्रॉम दैट दैट इज अनराइचियस इधि अनुभव न निवृत्ति परिपाल्य प्राग अभाव योगित्व निवृत्ति प्रयत्न कार्यत्व प्राग अभाव ऑफ निवृत्ति एक्सप्लेन्स फॉर एग्जांपल निवृत्ति प्रयत्न अनादि सिद्ध अधर्म प्राग अभाव तथव तिष्ठती स्वरापानादिप अधर्मे निवृत्ति प्रयत्न कार्य व्यवहार लाइक स्वरापान दैचुरल टेन्डेन्स इन पर्सन टू टेक् आलोहल what was the reason maybe but then people have so wherever nisheda is done by vedas by the shastra when the shastra asks us to desist from something not to do something then it is merely to restrain a natural tendency since there is a natural tendency to eat meat since there is a natural tendency to drink wine alcohol or whatever it is therefore the person is i mean person is uh, prohibited from engaging to some activity and therefore there is a restrainment on the part of the person that is called nivrutti so restrainment also is an activity so nivrutti also is an activity just as pravrutti is as you're saying the other day like the car is a natural tendency to roll down a slope suppose you want that car to stand on the slope then you have to apply the brake so applying the brake is it it, it serves the purpose of this uh, restraining the car so that also is an activity similarly there is a natural tendency of the part of a human being to drink alcohol or whatever and therefore when you don't drink alcohol then there is a restrainment adharmat nivrutto hum now i don't drink alcohol when there is a tendency if such a tendency is there then this thing will be there suppose there is a tendency suppose on a given day you are observing a fast the tendency to eat 15 times a day let us say that is a tendency you know every time you feel you are bored and you feel that you go and eat something 
Then every time you restrain yourself, remember I am fasting today, I am fasting today, then every time you say, I have restrained, I have refrained from eating, I have refrained from eating, I have refrained from breaking my fast. So that is a, that activity of restraining or refrainment is there. So that is called adharma, nivrutta, amiti, anubhavena. Then, nivrutti prayatnena anadi siddha adharma pragabhava. That this desire to eat, desire to eat meat or desire to drink alcohol is what? Nobody has created anadi siddha. That human being is, I mean after all since these sense organs have a natural attraction for the sense objects, there were nobody else to teach him. The tongue will demand that which is tasty and eyes will demand that which is beautiful and the touch will demand something, you know, this there will be natural demand. So nobody is to teach this fellow. This desire to enjoy the objects of the senses is anadi siddha. This desire is anadi siddha means already obtaining natural and not something that is created and so also nobody is to create a desire to drink alcohol I guess I don't know I guess it's true actually friends do that that's called the peers peer mean the elder fellows in your the, the leaders in your gang or leaders in your group and they pressurize you into smoking and things like that so very often the smoking in the but then once you had smoked then it gives you a kick to get a kick is anadi siddha you know to get a kick is something that is naturally desired by a human being and smoking gives a kick or alcohol gives a kick and so to get that kick is something that a person desires. So there is anadi siddha, this kind of a anadi siddha that adharma pragabhava, the not engaging to adharma is what? Adharma pragabhava. <coughs> ana, ana, adharma pragabhava means potential adharma is there, pragabhava means potential. Anadi Siddha Adharma Pragavavaha. That potential of Adharma is there in a person just naturally. Tathaiva Tishthati. That Adharma Pragavava or potential of Adharma is not allowed to express. Just as potential energy of the water is allowed to become kinetic energy when you release it through a valve, then similarly also potential of Adharma is allowed through action, you know, released through an action. And because what? Kinetic thing meaning it becomes action. But Dhamaha or restrainment is that that potential is, remains potential and doesn't become a reality. This is called nivrut, Nivrutti is keeping that potential, Dharma potential alone. Tathaiva tishthadu, tishthadi. The poor thing remains a potential and doesn't actually become a reality. Iti etavata sura pana dirupa dharma nivrutti rupa prayatna karitpa vyavaharaha. Actually somebody will say that he does not drink alcohol. Where is the question of activity involved here? If you say that Vedas necessarily create in you an activity, when they say, Suram na pivet, may you not drink alcohol, what activity is there? There is no activity generated. So you have to show how activity is generated, even in such statements of Nisheda. There is anadi siddha adharma pragabhava the potential of adharma is there in a person and by statements such as do not drink alcohol, the person is prevented from expressing that potential into reality or converting that potential into actuality and that way restrainment is involved. Therefore, nivrutti also is prayatna. Pravrutti is also prayatna and nivrutti also is prayatna. <coughs> so, adharma nivrutto hamiti anubhavena nivrutti paripalya Pragabhava yogitva nivrutti prayatna karyatva mityaha. So Pragabhava yogitva, that which keeps the Pragabhava as Pragabhava alone and which is not opposed to Pragabhava, Pratiyogi is that which is opposed to it. So Pragabhava yogitva means that which keeps the Pragabhava as Pragabhava, where there is a natural tendency to express it, therefore, so nivrutti prayatna karyatva. So nivrutti also becomes a prayatna. You have to resist. Anger is there and you have to hit somebody. Don't hit. You know, then what? He has to restrain. And don't tell, you know, don't use bad words. And he wants to do that. He has to restrain. In all this, when instructions are given, then there is restrainment on the part of the person and therefore there are also pravrtis involved. <coughs> so, nivrti prayatna kare prayatna dvida pravrti rupa nivrti rupa scha tatha nivrti rupa prayatna tat kare sitya that we read okay 
तथा चहे निवृत्ति प्रयत्न कार्य त्वज्ञाना तूष्णी ही तूष्णीम भाव रूपा निवृत्ति जाये दे and similarly also by that knowledge of निवृत्ति तूष्णीम भाव रूपा में restraining my natural tendency that kind of an activity is generated by this निषेध और by हेतव so निषेध gives the knowledge of हेतवम and विधि gives the knowledge of उपादेय so विधि and निषेध also give only knowledge Actually, vidhi and nisheda don't actually prompt you into activity. They just give you knowledge. So, svarga kama yajeta. Then that gives a knowledge that there is a yaga here, which is a means for svarga. That's all they say. Don't say you perf- they don't say you should perform this yaga. But since I am interested in svarga, there is a natural tendency of for happiness also. So, sukha prapte and dukha nivruti is natural. And therefore, activities are created by this fellow so Vedas just enable us to know what is known, unknown to you. That this is a means for Svarga. That's all they say. Or this means for Anartha. That's what Nisheda says. And since there is a desire on my part to desist from Anartha and desire on my part to acquire Artha, therefore I engage in activity. Otherwise it's not that the Vedas ask you to do things. They don't ask you to do. They just, Vedas only Agnyatasya Gnyaparam. So Vidhi also is what? Only Agnyadasya Gnyaparam, according to the Vidhi also, just makes us know something that we did not know. Okay. Taya Naraka Dehe Abhavadvai Surapanam will take you to Naraka. In this life, perhaps, you can get away with some kind of a kick and what not, but according to Vedas, Surapanam will land you where? In Naraka. Or Kalanja Bhakshana also will land you. That's what they say. There again, Shastra alone is Praman, you know. As far as Svarga and Naraka are concerned, Shastra alone is Pramanam. Since we accept Vedas as Pramanam, we accept Svarga and Naraka also. Svarga, I want to go. Naraka, I do not want to go. So, Naraka, Deha, Bhavad, Dukkha, Hana, Rupa, Phalatvam, Upajayate, Utpadyate. Therefore, there is a phala of the nature of cessation or desisting from the Dukkha of Naraka. There were Heyatvam or Upadeyatvam must be there. Siddha Vastu does not have Heyatvam, Uparadeyatvam. And therefore, even if Vedas, you say, reveal that, it is Nishpala, meaning does not serve any purpose. Therefore, Vedanta cannot reveal. So, two reasons are given. First of all, if you say that Vedanta reveals something that is already existing, then they do not, then they, they cannot be called Pramanam because they reveal something which is already known through other means. And if you still insist that Vedas, Vedanta reveals, then it does not serve the purpose because in an already existing thing or established or acquired thing rather, Siddha acquired thing, Siddha was also can be acquired thing, then there is no Hetvam or Padhetvam and therefore also there is no Phalavadarsaparatvam meaning no Purusharsa or human end is achieved by the knowledge of such a thing. <coughs> now, continues. Nanu Ghatagnyanasa Siddha Gnyanatvat तेन फला फला भाव प्रसंग है दिच्छेद न घटा दे है भी अर्थक क्रिया विशिष्टत्वे न तन मधे साध्यत्वंगी कारा What is meant by सिद्धव? Suppose the pot is lying there. How about the knowledge of that pot? Pot is already there and therefore does the knowledge of the pot does it do anything to you? Is his pot now what does this pot which is lying there in which category does it fall? Is it सिद्धव वस्तु और ना? He says, ghatā dehe api artha kriya visishta tvena. Even though a part is there, knowledge of the part nevertheless serves a purpose because you are interested in filling water and you find out that the part is there, then knowledge of part which is there also enables you to perform the kriya of filling the water. It serves a purpose. Therefore, even the knowledge of the part is called knowledge of sadhya vastu because it's not yet acquired. Siddha vastu is what is already acquired and which is already existing. And which doesn't have heyatvam and upadhyatvam. So Siddha Vastu has so many things now. So Ghatta is there, but then upadhyatvam is there. Therefore, it is Sadhya Vastu. Or disease is there. It has heyatvam. Therefore, also Sadhya Vastu. Elimination of disease also becomes a... So, knowledge of disease creates in you the knowledge of eliminating. I did not know I am something is there. You go to the doctor and tell you 15 things there, you know. <laughs> then your blood is like that and there's cholesterol is here and then sugar is there and then you know, all kinds of things they reveal. Then immediately there is knowledge of what is already there but it creates in me an activity of getting rid of the disease. Once somebody went to a, an astrologer with Janmaksha, that astrologer said every planet was against this person, you know. 
an astrologer suggested that you must perform puja of every deity on this day for so many you know days and so much dakshin all this will go in there fellow were totally you know frustrated what to do but now you come to know that such a difficulty is there some calamity is going to come in the life and therefore may you perform this puja that puja so that thing which is there but still there's hetvam so anything that is hetvam upadayatvam is not siddha vastu is sadhya vastu brahman does not a hetvam and upadayatvam therefore it is siddha vastu so ghata if it is hetvam and upadayatvam then sadhyatva angikara adi is vantavyam this is an extra sentence you know which uh, is his own sentence not commenting upon anything on ratna prabha now sangraha vakyam now going to ratna prabha so when you say this then what about this agnir himasya bhesham how about all those statements sarhi siddha bodhi vedavadanam safalyam kasam then we may ask him we will ask him how about ved so what is it vedavada arthavada etc so all these uh, arthavada etc like agni himasya bheshram at the aditya yupah it is siddha bodhi so agni himasya bheshram that agni is an antidote for cold there is something that is already known to us then vedavada naam kasam safalyam then how how do those statements serve any useful purpose please tell us इति आशंके आमनायस्य इत्यादि संग्रह वाक्यम विवृणोति आमनायस्य क्रियार्थत्वात् आनर्थक्यम् अतदर्थानाम् आनर्थक्यम् से संग्रह वाक्यम् संग्रह वाक्य गत आनर्थक्यम् अतदर्थानाम् इति अंशं विवृणोति व्हाट इज संग्रह वाक्य इन सूत्र वेदा आमनायस्य क्रियार्थत्वात् आनर्थक्यम् अतदर्थानाम् सो एनी स्टेटमेंट व्हिच इज नॉट रिलेटेड टू क्रिया इज मीनिंगलेस और इज यूजलेस so that is first explained and the usefulness of all the veda vakyas is shown subsequently says ataha eva bhashyakara says therefore ataha eva sorodhi ittyeva madina anarthakyam mabhu iti vidinato एक वाक्य त्वाद स्तुत्यर्थे न विधिनाम सिहु इति स्तावकत्वे न अर्थवत्व मुक्तम् जोल पूर्व पक्षी सेज एस्टैब्लिशिंग हिस पक्षा अतः एवा सह अरोधी दरिद वाक्य ही वेप्ट रुद्रा वेप्ट दैट्स वाइज कॉल्ड रुद्रा since he wept, therefore it's called Rudra. Atahayava, he was prevented, he was restrained by the devatas, therefore he wept. So there's a story. Then Rudra, when he wept like this, then from his, then the tears rolled out from his eyes and those tears got converted into silver. This is this story there. And so what, whatever it means, you see, so they have to explain. Saharodhi, there is a long walk here there. Says, uh, look at the Purnandiya. Saha arodi, yet arodi, tad rudrasya rudratvam, yet ashru ashiyate, ashiyata, tad rajatam hiranyam abhavat, tasmad rajatam hiranyam adakshanyam, ashrujam hiyo barihi dadadi, pura asya sumvat sarad brahe rudandi, in the vakya masataha patati, devahi, this is vakya. Saha arodi, when Rudra was restrained by the devatas, then he wept. Yet arodit tad rudrasya rudratvam. Yet in Yashmat, since he wept, therefore he is called Rudra. Rudra is called Rudra because he wept. Rudra is, Rud means to weep. And so, Rodhanad Rudra. Since he wept, therefore he is Rudra. Okay. Yet ashru ashiyata tad rajatam hiranyam abhavat. The ashru or the tears that came out from his eyes, the rajatam of earth, that became silver. What sort of hiranyam rajatam? Hiranyam means sundara varanam. So hitaramaniyam or what a hiranyam means beautiful or shining. So the tears that came out from his eyes, eyes of Rudra, became silver, which was shining silver. Tasmad rajatam hiranyam adakshanyam. Therefore, 
So Ashuru or the tears are not an auspicious thing. Because when a person weeps, because he is pained, therefore he weeps. Therefore tears cannot be considered to be an auspicious sign. There was silver which is born of tears such as this also cannot be considered an auspicious. And therefore silver is not an auspicious thing. So silver should not be given during Yaga. What should be given? Gold must be given. The idea is that silver should not be given during a Yaga. Because silver is a product of what do you know where it comes from? One day Swami Vrajeshwananda Ji gave me a long lecture on that vadi, whatever it is, you know. Now that in, in Rishikesh that made some vegetable, this vadi. And then he kept on telling me, you know, Swamiji, what is this? I said, no, I, I didn't even recognize the body. In Rishikesh, you can't recognize what they have done anyway. He recognized it as body. I did not recognize it as anything. And therefore, he was asking, what is this? Do you know, Swamiji, what this is? I said, no, I don't know what. It tastes good. Then he gave me a long story of his experience in Uttarakashi. Took half an hour to describe. Then he told me the source of body. From what a wretched thing or, or you know discarded or rejected thing these bodies are made. And therefore you should not eat that. That was the idea there. So the idea of this giving that whole story was that this body is something that one should not eat because it is made from, I don't remember what it is made from, but as, he, as I can understand, he even then also I could not quite understand what he was telling me. But this much I could understand that it was Nishiddha, that's all. And how about the ice cream? That is gelatin. What is this gelatin made of? And when they tell you this, then they don't say don't eat ice cream, but they tell you this kind of thing. And then we stop eating ice cream anyway. So you, st you can't eat anything now when you go to, what? you can't even eat bread. You can't eat french fries. French fries means, about, what do you call them? Potato chips. They are called french fries. And so, you, then formally we are eating that stuff. Then we were told that, you know what they are frying in? They are frying, these french fries or potatoes are fried in lard oil. That's all. You can't eat that now. And then you take this potato, mashed potato. Now you don't have nothing much to eat, so mashed potato. On that they spread gravy, which is very tasty. Somebody saw me eating, that shows what all I have eaten by the way, inadvertently. Somebody saw me eating this, this one, and you, that time I was not a Swami. But he says, do you know what this gravy is made up of? It is made up of the most wretched things, you know. It is made up of the dis all the refuse or the leftover of the meat products and stuff. Of that they make gravy. You know? That means what? Nishedha. So whenever they tell you the source of a thing, the purpose is this is Nishiddha. Similarly, this Rajata, this silver is made up of what? You know? It is made up of the uh, tears of this Rudra. When he wept, when he was restrained by the Devatas. That means this silver is not an auspicious thing. And therefore, it should not be given as Dakshina. Therefore, Rachatam Hiranyam Adakshinyam. Therefore, it cannot be given as Dakshina. Ashrujam Hiyo Barhishi Dadadi. Therefore, this, this Rajatam Adakshinyam Hiranyam Ashrujam born of Ashru, Yo Hiyo Barhishi Dadadi. Whoever gives it in the Yaga as a Dakshina, Urasya Samvat Sarat Bruhe Rudandi, he also will have to weep. Samvat Sarat Pura before the end of the year. Before the end of the year, in this house, there will be weeping. So when do we weep? When somebody dies or something really sad happens, this is what will happen. If anybody gives silver as Dakshina in a Yaga, before the end of the year, there will be weeping in the house of that person. Now you give if you want to give. So nobody will give. And that is how this Nishad Vakya is there, you know. So Saha Arodhi is a Vakya. That Saharodit Vakya ultimately connects with this Nisheda. And therefore it is, it is meaningful. Saharodit, he wept, is not meaningful in its own self, by, by its own, in its own way. But in as much as it tells us the story of what happened, then that is how it reveals the Adakshinyatvam of silver. That silver is not worth or is not proper to give silver. Since that meaning is revealed indirectly, therefore it becomes Sarthavada because it is Ekavakyada or it has the same, it, 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 it is a part of the same meaning with the Nisheda and therefore it is called Arthavada, therefore it is meaningful and that is how 
say jai meaning means pura me mamsakas have classified all such statements by connecting them with corresponding vidhi or nisheda <coughs> that's what bhashyakara said etaha eva saharodit ittiva madinam anasakyam mahud when it said anasakyam atadarthanam that is amsha that all those vakyas which are not related to karya all of them become useless and there were saharodit he wept such statements have no relation with the kriya because they do not reveal kriya and therefore they would all become useless and that there should not be uselessness in any vakya of the vedas therefore anarthakyam mahabhud idi krutva keeping that in mind the jaimini wrote this sutra vidhinatu ek vakyatvat stutyarthena vidhinam sihu vidhinatu ek vakyatvat also statements of ek vakyata meaning they have the same syntactical relationship or they convey the same idea with vidhi or nisheda stutyarthena vidhinam how is there ek vakyata vidhinam stutyarthena because they praise the that which is that which is to be enjoined and therefore arthavadaha safalaha sihu so arthavada are also are useful or meaningful <coughs> सिस पुराण दा दा टू कंप्लीट दैट डिस्कशन अश्रुज रजतस्य बरहिषि दाने संवत्सरात पुरा गृहे रोदनम भवति ही एक्सप्लेन्स इट अश्रुज रजतस्य द रजता इज बोर्न ऑफ टीयर्स बरहिषि दाने इफ यू गिव दैट एज दक्षिणा इन याग संवत्सरात पुरा बिफोर द एंड ऑफ द ईयर गृहे रोदनम भवति इन द हाउस विल बी रोदनम इदि रोदन अभावात्मक इष्ट निवृत्ति रूप फल सहित है रजतस्य so therefore there is rodana abhavatmaka ishta nivritti roopa phala anishta nivritti ha so anishta nivritti roopa phala anishta nivritti means so the cessation of something undesirable of the nature of rudanam so phala sahitah rajatasya so that rajatasya devanuruddha agnehe ashru janyatvena ninditatva rajatasya ninditatva this rajata is been therefore there is ninda और कंडेमनेशन ऑफ दैट रजत बिकॉज देव निरुद्ध अग्नि है अश्रुजन अग्नि वॉज प्रिवेंटेड और रिस्ट्रेन बाय अदर देवदास ही वेप्ट देर फॉर ही वॉज रुद्र सो रजत दक्षिणा कयागम न कुरिया सो मे यू नॉट परफॉर्म यागा विच हैज रजता एस दक्षिणा मीनिंग इन यागा मे यू नॉट गिव रजता एस दक्षिणा एंड वॉट शुड यू गिव वॉट एवर इज अदर देन रजत मीन सिल्वर आई गोल्ड यू नो सो यू मस्ट गिव गोल्ड आई गेस दैट्स वॉट द मीनिंग मस्ट बी so this fellows will doubt you know look at these things you know this yesterday only somebody was saying all these brahmanas have done this you know that is for their own business that they have done the shastram is this so they have tempered with the scriptures and so tempering the scriptures in order to sustain their own livelihood etc so this may be looked upon by commentators learned commentators as tempering the scriptures as kshepakam because this says that silver should not be given and gold i guess you know should be given because such discussions are there in some place it was said in the smruti grantha that after the yaga some particular cloth and whatever is involved there should be all given to the priest and so smruti is supposed to be also pramanam because it is a root it is it is a source in the shruti and uh, so there was a discussion should this smruti be considered as pramanam or not says it should not be considered as pramanam because there is lobha mulaka somebody there is a lobha involved there some greed is involved because what relation this cloth has with the priest you know so priest should collect all the cloth and all the fruits and all the whatever is there in the yaga collect everything along with the cloth you know so you take a cloth on that all the grains and everything are decorated and all sorts of things are there along with cloth you take it away not only along with cloth along with this this what do you call it the uh, along, along with the along with the table you take it away no so thank god it doesn't take the carpet <laughs> but anyway so na kurya nisheda ya tat sheshatvam sarodhi ityadi vakya se yatha tadvat so nisheda vakya sheshatvam is there it becomes helpful in explaining a nisheda vakya therefore this vakya also is meaningful <coughs> so now we can understand ratnabrava very easily 
अतः एव मीनिंग वॉट सिद्ध वस्तु ज्ञानात् फल अभाव इत्यर्थ है सिंस इन नॉलेज ऑफ सिद्ध वस्तु देर इज नो फल आर्ट बी अचीव्ड इन सिद्ध वस्तु विच इज नो हेत्व नो उपाय देत्व सो नो प्रवृत्ति नो निवृत्ति सो नो सुख प्राप्ति नो दुख निवृत्ति सो देर इज नो फल वट इज मैन इज सीकिंग फल अभाव देव निरुद्ध सह अग्नि अरोधी वाक्य दैट मे बी सम्लेस सो देव निरुद्ध सह अग्नि अरोधी दैट वाक्य मे बी इन सम्लेस विच इज कनेक्टेड निषेध इन सम अदर प्लेस वाक्य से अश्रुजत्व रजत से निंदा द्वारा बरहिषि न देय सो बरहिषि न देय मीन्स वाक्य सो बरहिषि रजत न देय इन बरहिषि दिस रजत शुड नॉट बी गिवन वाई शुड इट नॉट बी गिवन द क्वेश्चन राइज then that whole sentence that we read will clarify how rajata is ninditam and therefore nadeyam rajata becomes adakshinyam iti safala nisheda sheshatva vad vedantanam vidhyadi sheshatvam vacha mityarthah iti safala nisheda sheshatva vad so safala nisheda we explain what is safalatvam there is anishta nivaranatvam so by by desisting or by eliminating this possible anishta then that is how it serves the purpose nisheda also serves the purpose of anishta nivritti that is an see the safalatvam nisheda so vedantanam with similarly just as saharodit also statements have meaning meaningfulness only by way of being helpful in the nisheda vakya or vidhi vakya similarly if you say that Vedanta are also meaningful. Then you must connect them with either Ved, Vidhi Vakya or Nisheda Vakya. Then alone they can be considered as meaningful. Otherwise not. So Vidhya Dishesatum Vachyam Vedanta Nam Vidhya Dishesatum Vachyam. Similarly, so in that sense, Vedanta has must be shown as must have the source Dishesatum, meaning connected with Vidhi or Nisheda. <coughs> Okay, now another point is being brought up, which brings up a new discussion. But the trend of the discussion is that Veda is twofold. One is called mantra, other is called Brahmana. So mantra <coughs> also doesn't reveal Kriya, by the way. Only Brahmana, which is of the nature of Vidhi and Nisheda. So Brahmana is nothing but the sacred commentaries. and mantras are the the uh, sacred uh, you know the formulas you may say so mantras are there where some praise of the devata is involved and so this kind this is what is involved in mantras so there also you do not find any direct revelation of kriya does it mean that so then this mimamsa ka so discard all mantras if you know if they are not connected to kriya so kriya sheshatva must be there in the mantra also then alone mantras can be considered to be pramanam and therefore How do mantras attain pramanyam? So first category of Veda is mantra. Second class, the second is Brahmana. So you have to find that even though mantras do not directly reveal kriya, they still have kriya sheshatva, meaning they are they have some use in the kriya. That's called prayojagatva. No, not pray. Vinyoga. Vinyoga means that application is there. So what is this? Ramachandra prithyarthe vinyoga hai. और साम शिव सदाशिव प्रीत्य विनियोग है सो देन लोन ए मंत्र बिकम्स मीनिंगफुल वेन देर इज ए विनियोग सो साम शिव प्रसाद सिद्ध्य से जपे विनियोग है वेन इज जप ऑफ द रुद्र इज परफॉर्म देन सदाशिव सांब सदाशिव प्रीति देन द लॉर्ड सांब सदाशिव इज प्लीज एंड देन वेन इज प्लीज देन वी गेक्वायर द ग्रेस एंड देर इज ऑल दी बिकम्स अ मीन्स फॉर हैप्पीनेस इन दैट सेंस ए मंत्र हैव मीनिंगफुलनेस by being connected with the with some kind of a kriya so arthavada has a meaningfulness by way of doing stuti or ninda and that is how vidheya or nishiddha vidheya means that which is enjoined nishiddha is that which is prohibited so by the stuti or the vidheya or by the ninda or the nishiddha the arthavada serve the purpose but mantras do not serve purpose that way mantras don't praise or don't condemn anything in the sense of vidhi and nisheda then how do the mantras serve the purpose mantras are those which are employed in the process of performing a ritual so all the mantras necessarily find their application in in the process of performing one or the other ritual and that is why that is how they are considered to be 
meaningful. Otherwise, these mantras to them, they don't, they don't have any meaning. They don't look at the philosophical meaning of the mantras or such profound meaning revealed by the mantras, Mimamsakas don't have much use for it. In fact, if you study the mantras, they themselves reveal very profound meanings and therefore, when it, many people even see that, Upanishads are nothing but explanation of those mantras. So, beautiful mantras are found in the Samhita section and very often Upanishads reveal, they expound the meanings there. But as far as the Mimamsakas are concerned, Karma Kandas are concerned, that is not the purpose of the mantras. Mantras are purposeful because they have application in performance of karma. So they reveal the devata, or they reveal the, uh, the way the, the karma should be performed, or they reveal the phala, something they reveal. So by devata, etc., they, they, they are revealed, and therefore you must recite the mantra, or whatever they reveal. The point is that in the Brahmana, where they describe how to perform a yaga, they say that at given point in time you must you must recite a certain mantra. And that is how since mantras find their place in the performance of yaga, therefore they must have a meaning because they must be creating some result. If you don't recite those mantras, then the yaga cannot be complete. And that is how mantras become anga of the yaga. And that is how they are also meaningful. So mantras have, the usefulness of mantras is arrived at in a different way from the usefulness of arthavada. So, Arthavadas are found in Brahmana section. That's how usefulness was arrived at. Mantras are not in Brahmana section, they are in Mantra section. So, you have to arrive at the usefulness of the Bra- Mantra. In as much as Upanishads are also not found in, they are also considered different Prakarana. So, we may claim Upanishad to be of the nature of Mantra. So, give, us, give the Upanishad the status of Mantra and whatever is a justification of Mantra being useful, same justification should be accorded to Upanishad also for being useful. You understand? Just as all mantras, you know, Sahasra, Sirasha, Purusha, or whatever, all these mantras, all of them are usefulness because they are part of some ritual or the other. And that is how mantras gain their usefulness. We say that Upanishad also should be accorded the status of mantra, and that is how they will gain the usefulness by way of japa, by way of something. Aham Ruksha Shreriva, that mantra japa itself gives you phala. And so, this Upanishad mantra also can be, con- because they are mantra, they can be useful in the same way as other mantras are. <coughs> so now the Puru Pakshi wants to show that Upanishads do not, do not fall in the category of mantra in that sense, and therefore that way also Upanishads are not meaningful or not useful. That is the trend of the next discussion. Okay, so that will continue tomorrow. <clears throat> Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyade Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashashyade Om Shanti 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 Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhashya Krutau Vande Bhagavanta Punaf Punaha Ishvaro Guru Ratmedi Murti Veda Vibhagine Vyoma Vat Vyapta Dehaya Dakshina Murtaya Namaha Om Shanti 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 Om Atta Om Atta Om Atta